My name is Randy Seely. I work here at the University of Cincinnati and lead a group that's focused on understanding uh, why we get obese and what we can do about it. So part of what we do here in the lab is try to understand the underpinnings of the biology that allows us to match our caloric intake to caloric expenditure. So even in obese individuals, we, everyone is made able to match their caloric intake to caloric expenditure pretty accurately. And the question is, how can we create situations where people can lose weight, keep it off, without that biology pushing us back to the same weight we were before? So if you look at the United States, we have approximately 64 million obese individuals. If you add on the people who are overweight, it's almost two-thirds of the population who struggle with their weight in one form or another. So you can imagine that because of the size of the obese population in the United States, new therapies that are effective, safe, and durable are likely to have large uh, economic impacts, both for Ethicon Endosurgery, the city of Cincinnati, and the state of Ohio. So one of the important things in our research is to know what hormone levels are in your blood. And one way we do that is to use this machine right here, which is called a mesoscale. What it does is it allows us to measure lots of different hormones at the same time. So instead of measuring one at a time, we can now measure 15 or 20 at a time. It gives us way more information than we had before. This is one of the only units that's actually in use in academia. Some large companies have these, but most academic labs don't have the resources to be able to afford one of these. But they move our research along at a much higher pace, making the data collection faster and cheaper than it would be otherwise. So in these individual wells are samples of blood which we want to measure various hormones. Those samples go into the machine, and over a period of a couple of hours, this machine will then churn out data on each of those wells to tell us, again, what the levels of between 15 to 20 hormones look like. Obviously, people who suffer from obesity suffer from increased rates of heart disease, diabetes, and many cancers. The reality is that if we could actually deal with obesity rather than dealing with these downstream medical complications, we'd all be better off and we'd save the healthcare system hundreds of billions of dollars.